Warren is with us. Uh, he and his wife, Joy, spent two decades immersed in the New Age movement until God finally broke them free. And Warren is now the author and speaker who uh, discusses New Age movement uh, implications and alerts believers on what to look for in this movement. So, Warren, welcome to Stand Up for the Truth. Thanks for being with us. Thanks. It's really good to be with you. Now, now, Mike wanted me to mention uh, in the introduction that you are from Chico, California, and there's somebody in our immediate <laughs> listening area that, that he always likes to talk about. So, Mike, go ahead. Just uh, mention who that is. Well, uh, a good man of the Lord and uh, uh, certainly a community leader, Aaron Rodgers of the Packers is from Chico. And uh, so certainly, Aaron, if you're listening, uh, uh, it's a little bit of homecoming here for you with Warren <laughs> being from there. So, uh, Warren, I, I want to ask this question just to, to start off with our listeners. Um, you and Joy over the years have experienced many facets and faces of New Age spirituality. Um, in your case, it all started with a psychic reading uh, that you mentioned in your book called The Light That Was Dark, uh, From the New Age to Amazing Grace. Tell us about how this started for you and where it came from. Well, I wish I could say that my motivation was, was really deep to, to know God and to do spiritual uh, things, but it came down to the fact that I was fascinated by a waitress in a local restaurant in Chico, and I had her over for dinner one night, and in the course of the evening's conversation, she said that a friend of a friend of hers was coming down from Canada, and she was a psychic. Would I like to have a psychic reading? And I had an immediate kind of check. I'm from the East Coast, and, you know, psychics just weren't something that, that we did and and yet i kind of wanted to uh to please her and the fact that she seemed to be giving it the the big thumbs up i just thought well maybe it's not that bad and you know i can get into her good graces so i ended up seeing a psychic and um <clears throat> the thing that was really amazing to me was that this woman as she started to do her psychic reading was able to tell me things about myself that she had no business knowing. I mean, she was telling me things that were going on in my social life, things that were going on in my work life, and she really got my attention. And uh, maybe about two-thirds through the reading, uh, I suddenly felt this whirling sensation over the top of my head. And uh, it was very disconcerting, and I, I didn't say anything. And all of a sudden, she says to me, are you aware that there's a ball of light over your head right now? And I said, I don't know what that is, but I can feel it. She said, you have a ball of light. And I said, well, what does that mean? And she said, you have a lot of help on the other side. And I said, well, what do you mean by the other side? And she said, the spirit world, loved ones that have passed on, spirits that are interested in your welfare. She said, but for them to help you in your life, you have to give them permission. You have to let them know that you want their help. So that night, on the flat roof of my house there in uh, Northern California, uh, I, I looked up at the heavens and I sort of reflected back on my life and I felt this was a very significant thing I was about to do. And I said, all you on the other side, I want your help in my life. I want to be more spiritual. I want to grow. And, um, you know, anybody that's a believer that's listening knows that that's kind of like the opposite of the sinner's prayer. Mm -hmm. I just gave permission to uh, what I had no idea was a deceptive spirit world to come into my life and to start creating circumstances that would take me deeper and deeper into deception and into the New Age spirituality. And I want to talk to our listeners out there, particularly younger listeners. This whole New Age movement may be new to you. And when we talk about spirituality, and you might have just listened to what Warren said and said, oh, come on. Uh, remember what the Apostle Paul said, our battle is not against flesh, but against powers and principalities in the spiritual world. This stuff is real, and as you read the Word of God, Old and New Testament, you see that there are there is the Spirit of the Lord and there are evil spirits out there. Yeah, I, I want to ask you about that that next step that you took because you accepted, you know, this and you you asked these spirits to come into you and you you sort of believed the the way the psychic set it up was it, it could be people who, uh, who have died that you've loved or you know you don't know who the spirit is but but you've invited the spirit in. What happened next? Well, of course, I had I had no Bible background. Um, I had I had gone to a very liberal church as a as a kid in Connecticut. It was one of those beautiful New England churches that you see in uh, pictures of New England, but uh, it was a very liberal gospel. There was nothing about um, anything deceptive out there. There was no hint of a, of a real uh, spiritual being by the name of Satan. That was, you know, on the East Coast, anybody with any education, you, you don't believe in something like that. That would be like superstitious. So 
what happened is by giving permission and by by entering into this occult world that I didn't even understand, I just thought I was doing something really spiritual, something really good. Um, my life started to move in a, in a much more spiritual direction, but of course it was really away from the Lord and towards the deception. The next step was uh, on New Year's Eve, way back in uh, 1979, I'm dating myself, but this New Age movement has gone on for a long time. really started in the 60s with a lot of the uh, uh, drugs, uh, a lot of the psychedelic experiences, Beatles, uh, all that stuff played a part. But on New Year's Eve, I wanted to do something very spiritual and, and special, and I went, went down to um, uh, Big Sur, California, and uh, it's a very beautiful part of the California coast. And I uh, went to this big bookstore called Nepenthe, and I wanted to get a very spiritual book. And I found this book called um, Journey Towards the Heart by Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh. And I'd never heard of the man before. He was an Indian master, a guru, and it seemed very spiritual. Anyway, to make a long story short, due to a variety of just amazing circumstances, I ended up staying at a very special place on top of a mountain, just maybe about a quarter of a mile away from the bookstore. And I wound my way up this mountain road with a driver by the name of Orion, staying in a place that very few people stayed. The owner of the of the uh, lodge there uh, took a deep look into my eyes and said, how would you like to stay on top of this mountain tonight? Most people stayed in the cabins down below. When I went to check in at the desk, the woman said, you're staying at Top House? And I went, yeah. And she said, whoa, it was like not very many people did. So here I was on top of this mountain, literal mountaintop experience on New Year's Eve. When I got up to the top of the, of the mountain there, I was looking down on clouds, out at blue sky. It was absolutely spectacular. It was like being in heaven. The ocean was out there below the clouds, but I couldn't even see it. It was like being in heaven. Put my suitcase down in the room, and on the bed stand by the bed, was another book called Only One Sky by Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh. Never heard of the man before. I picked up that book at the bookstore maybe uh, 45 minutes earlier. So in my mind, it was like, whoa, meant to be. You know, the famous meant to be. But I didn't know that there were circumstances that were meant to be by God and there were circumstances that were meant to be by our adversary. So this continued my my journey of thinking that all these circumstances were benign and contributing to this spiritual journey that was taking me closer and closer to God. And yet, at the same time, I had no idea that I was going further and further away from God and into the deception that was being laid out in front of me. And, and you, I'm sorry, Mike, you talk about um, you know following different gurus throughout uh, your book, The Light That Was Dark. Um, gr- I mean, when I read this book, I could not put it down, I have to say, Warren. Um, and I started seeing some things that were very disturbing, um, as I'm sure you started to, too, as you were uh, looking into these different types of gurus. Well, you know, actually, with Rajneesh, everything was really um, pretty good for quite a long time. Uh, I... I had worked in San Francisco at the Greyhound bus station as a social worker at night working with homeless and stranded people. And I had somebody that came in. This was way previous to my getting involved with the psychic and with the new age. Uh, this was back in the uh, mid-70s, or actually late 70s before I came up to Chico. And uh, this man came in, and he had fled a cult in Northern California and told me about this charismatic leader he had been involved with. And I remember shaking my head. I helped them out. You know, we working for Travelers Aid, we helped people get a room for the night and uh, and some food, and I, I helped them get squared away. But when he walked out of, out of the office, I, I thought to myself, how does anybody get involved with a charismatic figure like that and get involved in all these spiritual things? Little did I know that just three years later, four blocks away from where I had seen this man, in the basement of the Congregational Church, I got together with 100 other followers of Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh. We were all dressed in orange clothing, and we did uh, a group meditation, and it was that easy. And it was this supernatural thrust that came from inviting the spirit world into my life, not knowing what it was. This can also happen to anyone that gets involved with occult books uh, or occult uh, practices. And unfortunately, many Christians unknowingly get involved in these things, and they open the door to some of these same experiences. So Raj Nish was really a very positive figure in my life. Um, He taught me, I thought, a lot of spiritual truths. And the thing I need to say is that a lot of what we learned 
uh, could have come right out of the Bible. We learned about forgiveness, about gratitude, about uh, unconditional love. But unfortunately, it was all put on a foundation of untruth. And that untruth that I was learning was that all of humanity is God. All of humanity is divine. And as a hu- one single human being, me, I was a part of this divine oneness. And that was the foundation that all the other stuff was put on. So unfortunately, the truth that I was accepting in my life was put on top of this false belief that I was a part of God, that I was one with God. You hear a lot about oneness, and it's that oneness that is being uh, brought into the church today, is being brought into the world today in a variety of ways. And unfortunately, um, Oprah Winfrey's been one of the chief uh teachers of, of this new age philosophy but uh anyway i i it was a very positive experience with rajneesh i learned to meditate i had uh spiritual experiences when i meditated that made me feel i was one with the universe one with god and uh there's an over overlapping uh thing today in the church with contemplative prayer where people are not being warned about the fact that a deceptive spirit world can come and can actually enter into what would seem to be a biblical meditation because people aren't testing the spirits um of course we didn't i didn't know to test the spirits because i didn't know there was anything to test but i think what you might be alluding to amy is that there came a time where i had moved on sort of away from rajneesh and into some other areas but i decided you know maybe maybe i i really should get back involved with rajneesh and i went to uh, berkeley california to the headquarters for the rajneesh center there and i walked in and i i said hey Anything going on? And they went, is anything going on? Raj Nish's right-hand man, Tirtha, is in from India, and he's doing a workshop tomorrow. Boy, is your timing divine. And I just went, whoa. It was another one of those meant-to-be circumstances, it seemed. And they said, but you have to have $100 cash. And I went, well, I don't know. I got a checkbook, but I don't have $100 cash. All of a sudden, a $100 bill was draped over the shoulder of the man standing next to me, and I recognized him from Chico. He was a man that I knew from Chico. And he said, you can pay me back when you get back to Chico. So there I was at this workshop, and uh, Tirtha was there the next day, and I thought, wow, I'm back in the Rajneesh movement. Um, Maybe I'll actually end up going to India, meeting Rajneesh, and becoming a devoted follower. But what happened in that workshop, I describe at length in my book, The Light That Was Dark, turned out to be a very, very uh, horrible experience. We were led in a guided meditation around the room, and uh, I won't go into any great detail, but uh, it was... It was uh, not a good scene. People were told to uh, resonate with whoever you resonate with and and stand there and express yourself with that person. Give them a hug, uh, give her a kiss, whatever. And what happened was that the whole thing disintegrated into a very, very tawdry and a very, very bad scene. And it just let me know I do not want to be involved with this movement. It gave me a real look into the darkness that underlay the Rajneesh movement. And... Some of the listeners may be familiar that um, later after I got out of the New Age, uh, Rajneesh actually came over, <clears throat> came over, excuse me, to this country and set up his ashram in, uh, in Antelope, Oregon. And that ashram disintegrated uh, into a real mess. Rajneesh fled the country. Uh, there were people that were arrested, and it was a really bad scene. So I was very, very grateful to be um, out of that movement long before he came to this uh, country. Warren, it's so important for our audience to understand the importance of terminology, and you talked uh, a little earlier about how the New Age movement says we are all God, and it's important uh, to understand, if this is new to you, the difference here, we are not God, we are adopted into God's family as his children because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, so it's very important as as you pray and as this New Age movement starts to to rebrand itself you understand the importance of terminology we are not god we are the body of christ and we are adopted into the family of god because of the sacrifice of jesus 
And I want to let our listeners know, too, that there are ways to ask uh, Warren Smith, our guest today, some questions. You can call us at 1-800-979-9010. Another way is to go to our email at uh, comments at standupforthetruth.com, or you can check out our Facebook and comment there. Uh, but I want to ask you something, Warren, about what you said before. Contemplative prayer is a, a word that, that we hear in churches today. I want to throw out some other words that you, over the... 20 years that you were in the New Age movement heard regularly that, that we can hear in churches today in America uh, Christ consciousness is one, uh, God so of above as below all truth is God's wherever you find it, visualize what you want, ask for visions and um, all of these things and there are probably many more things. Talk to us about some of those things that, that you learned about. Well um yeah, you, you mentioned 20 years. Actually, if you count all the psychology and all the stuff that I did prior to really committing myself to the New Age, I was really deeply involved in the New Age probably for about five years, but there was a huge, long preparatory period. And that a lot of psychology, a lot of uh, people are involved, say, like in social work as I was or counseling, uh, it starts to drift in through, uh, through psychology. But, uh, yes, there's an overlapping language and there's a there's a great scripture, First uh, Corinthians fourteen eight. If the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself for the battle? And unfortunately, most Christian leaders today uh, are not warning people about what's going on. And when you don't warn, then things start to to sift in. Uh, fortunately, you have a pastor in your area, Dwight Dovel, at Calvary Chapel. You had mentioned uh, the pastors' conference that they're having later. Dwight uh, and his church have been sounding the alarm, and I've actually been to the prophecy conference there for the last four years. And there are pastors, godly pastors, who are warning people uh, about the new age and about the deception, but unfortunately they're way in the minority. And uh, so as a result, there's this overlapping language. I'll give you an example. In the new age, uh, we had a saying that went back several thousand years. It was the key to all magic and all mysteries. Uh, it was the heart of everything that New Age stands for. And that was the phrase, as above, so below. As above, so below means that God is not only transcendent out there, he's imminent inside each and every person. One of the ways that this overlaps into the church is that in Eugene Peterson's paraphrase, The Message, which purports to be a paraphrase of the Bible, um, in his paraphrase of the Lord's Prayer, instead of saying, in earth as it is in heaven, he says, as above, so below. And I know that a lot of people have said, well, he didn't know what he was saying. But interestingly, I got an email from somebody overseas that said that when his book, The Message, came out in the early uh, 90s, 1990s, this man wrote him and said, Mr. Peterson, did you know that as above, so below is a new age term? And he said that uh, Peterson wrote back and said, if I had known that, I wouldn't have put it in there. Well, if you pick up uh, a copy of the message at your local Christian bookstore today, As Above, So Below is still in the message. And there are many other troubling passages. For instance, in Ephesians 4, 6, uh, and, and in that area of the Bible, Peterson translates what's said there in Ephesians. He says that oneness pervades everything that you say, are, and say, and do. Um, I, I, I don't say this to pick on Eugene Peterson, but unfortunately, his book becomes sort of an overlapping mechanism to kind of blend, you know, what is false with what is true. It's sort of a, a transitional thing that uh, is being used, unfortunately. I'm not saying that Peterson is doing this consciously, but by being undiscerning and by being sloppy in his paraphrasing, uh, there's great damage being done to the body of Christ because what happens is that the Bible gets watered down and you no longer have the Word of God. You've got something that is a blending of of what God has said in the Bible with things that, like, as above, so below. But you asked about contemplative prayer. Um, that, again, is an overlap. We did meditation. Well, uh, just recently, uh, Rick Warren defended meditation uh, in a sermon that he gave at Saddleback Church. And he said, you know, there's a lot of uh, believers out there that are nervous about the word meditation. And he said, uh, that just shouldn't be, because he says biblical meditation is throughout the Bible. And he's right. Biblical meditation is throughout the Bible. But to say that 
there are believers out there that are nervous about the word meditation, people should be concerned about the word meditation because there's a deceptive meditation that I was involved in. And there are New Age leaders who have actually meditated on Scripture and have come up with um, contact with the spirit world as a result. There's no guarantee that when you do uh, a reciting of Scripture and pray that what you're going to hear is necessarily from God. Now, does that mean that we have to be afraid of everything that comes into us? No, but it means that there's a reason for 1 John 4, 1, which says, Beloved, try the spirits, test the spirits, because every spirit is not from God. There are many false prophets that have gone out into the world. One of the main ways, when you read The Light That Was Dark, or you talk to people that have been involved in the New Age that are in the church now, one of the main ways that we were deceived was through the spirit world with actual contact, either through teachings that were delivered by false uh, deceptive spirits uh, and false Christs, uh, and this contact with the spirit world is now being done through things like biblical meditation when people aren't testing the spirits. So people have to be very, very careful these days. Again, you don't have to be afraid of these things, but you need to be biblical. You need to test the spirits need to understand that there are many warnings that those of us that got involved with the New Age never read because we hadn't read the Bible. We hadn't taken it seriously. So, um, yeah, you, we could spin off and do a whole thing just on the scriptures. For instance, 1 Timothy 4.1 says, The Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Well, that was exactly what I got involved in with a thing called A Course in Miracles. Mm. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about A Course in Miracles. And I just want to encourage you folks, if the term New Age Movement, if you haven't heard of it, or it doesn't mean anything to you, understand it's being rebranded under under different and deceiving names. So when we come back, more with Warren Smith about the new New Age Movement. This is Stand Up For The Truth. Call in your questions now at 494-9010 in Green Bay or 1-800-979-9010 nationwide. Now back to Mike LeMay. Mike and I are talking about the New Age movement, how it's being repackaged in the church as something different that you might not be aware of. Uh, but Warren Smith has some speaking engagements coming up. Uh, April 30th, Understanding the Times Prophecy Conference, and that's going to be at the Cedarburg Cultural Center. And then May 1st, Lake Country Bible Church is uh, having him in, and uh, you may want to get that. It's in Heartland, Wisconsin, and we'll put that information on our website. Karen from Green Bay, welcome to Stand Up for the Truth. Hi. Uh, this might be a little off of the subject matter at the moment, but in the seducing spirits or uh, deceiving names, do you have an opinion on the Reiki movement, and do you consider it New Age? Karen, thank you so much for the call. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, Reiki is, I, I actually was certified as a massage practitioner. That would have been part of my continuing story of getting more and more involved in the New Age movement. And uh, Reiki masters, a uh, good proportion of them are uh, in touch with spirit guides. And the spirit guides would be exactly uh, along the line of the uh, deceptive spirit world that I was involved in. Unfortunately, uh, people like Dr. Oz, uh, the kind of Oprah-produced doctor that's on TV now that uh, is apparently a very good cardiovascular surgeon, but he's involving a lot of people through his TV program with the occult. And he's actually told people... I think in 2010, uh, he said as his number one Oz order, try Reiki. His wife is a Reiki master. Unfortunately, when you involve yourself with a Reiki master who's in touch with the spirit world, you're placing yourself under that influence. It's very dangerous and something to stay away from. Uh, there's a really good book called The Time of Departing by uh, author and researcher Ray Youngen, and he talks about Reiki in his books. He's done a lot of research on that. And there's a whole constellation of bodywork practices. For instance, um, in my story that we're sort of developing here and will probably carry over into tomorrow, um, I came into contact with uh, a, a man uh, in uh, Chico who uh, was doing uh, massage therapy, but he was very involved uh, with the New Age. And it turned out later that uh, he was involved with some things that were even deeper and darker. And so when you when you 
go and have a massage, if you're with somebody that's involved in the New Age and people are putting their hands on you, you're actually placing yourself under that influence. And with Reiki, there isn't as much physical contact, actually very little, but you're placing yourself under the spirits that are guiding that Reiki master or that person doing Reiki. I know this flies in the face of a lot of what's popular out there, and of course when you've got someone as popular as Dr. Oz telling you that it's okay. But it's interesting, I read an interview that Dr. Oz had done with a Canadian uh, journalist um, a number of years back, and he said that he was skeptical and he was still hesitant about Reiki at that particular time. But now his wife is a Reiki master, and he's telling everybody to do it, but he's also... For instance, I mean, we're going to cover a lot of different subjects maybe in one thing here, but Rick Warren has just introduced a health plan for his church that he's planning on taking to the Church Universal, and he's involving Dr. Oz in his uh, Daniel plan. He's calling it the Daniel plan after the prophet Daniel. And, um, you know, I was kind of concerned. I shouldn't say I was kind of concerned. I was very concerned when I heard this. And I went to Rick Warren's Daniel plan website um, maybe about a month ago, and it had a, a place that you would um, click on and you could hear an interview with Rick Warren and, and Dr. Oz. Then there was another thing right there on Rick Warren's website where you could go directly to Dr. Oz's website. So I clicked that. First thing that I saw was New York City want to contact the dead. And he was having a program uh, on contacting the dead and, and speaking with your dead loved ones. And he, and he ended up having uh, psychic John Edward on his program. And he actually did some uh, with the equivalent of, you know, I mean, past just talking with dead people. I mean, it was, it was unbelievable. So you can go right from Rick Warren's website right to Dr. Oz's. And then there's a show. I think it was called Are Psychics the New Therapists? And if you go back to the beginning of my testimony, that's how I got in trouble. The psychic seemed to be a therapist. She was telling me things about myself, but I didn't realize I was involving myself with the spirit world. And there's a, a scripture, I think it's uh, Ephesians 4.27. It says, neither give place to the devil. When you go and let somebody do Reiki on you, or when you... Um, get involved with uh, many of the things that Dr. Oz is recommending, uh, you, you get involved with the very things that I was involved with in the New Age movement. Unfortunately, Dr. Oz also has a front page endorsement of a book by psychic Ainsley McLeod, actually two books by psychic Ainsley McLeod. And the first book that Dr. Oz has that front page endorsement, McLeod tells you to meditate, contact your spirit guides, and um, and and get in touch with your past lives and all these things that I was involved with in the New Age. As a matter of fact, there were 175 references to spirit guides in this book endorsed by Dr. Oz, 40 of them before you even got to Chapter 1. So the, the, the question is, why is Rick Warren bringing somebody like Dr. Oz and the other two doctors that are involved with the Daniel Plan are also involved with uh, New Age practices? Why is he bringing them into the church? This is part of the overlap, and I'm sure that what Rick Warren would tell you is that we're not involved with their spiritual beliefs. We simply want to do physical health and well-being. We want people to be, you know, to lose weight, to be more healthy. Well, let me tell you this. You don't bring in occultists into the church to teach the church how to be healthy because anybody that knows anything about holistic health, and that's what Dr. Oz, Dr. Amen, and Dr. Hyman are all involved in, we all know that it's body, mind, spirit. They're indivisible. You cannot divide off the spirit from the physical. So while Rick Warren would try to make it look like they're just doing physical stuff, people are going to say, oh, well, Dr. Oz is involved with Rick Warren. I think I'll watch his television program. And then pretty soon you're involved with, you know, somebody telling you about contacting the dead or uh, another show that Dr. Oz did was on, uh, he had somebody doing mass hypnosis. Um, I mean, people were being hypnotized by watching the program. Uh, you, you try Reiki and on and on and on. And this is why the Bible says you do not get yoked unequally with people like Dr. Us. Dr. Us has perfect right to teach whatever he wants to teach, to do whatever he wants to do. But for a Christian pastor to bring somebody like Dr. Oz into the church is unbelievable if, if the Bible didn't warn that this was going to happen. 
You know, uh, Warren, you mentioned a couple things I need to comment on. First of all, you said you know that a lot of what you're saying flies in the face of what is popular. Well, there's something else that flies in the face of what is popular, and that's the Word of God. And we have to understand that as true believers, we are going to be looked at as strange, as odd, as, as judgmental, as separatist, so be it. But also, someone out there might be saying right now, oh, come on, contacting the dead? Go to the Old Testament and look at the story of Saul and how the uh, the, the, the uh, uh, wicked priestess, if you will, was summoned a dead person back. This stuff is real. It was called necromancy, and there were great warnings. As a matter of fact, uh, King Saul... Uh, as you mentioned, I mean, the, the, the familiar spirits is what they were called in the Old Testament, and uh, seducing spirits in First Timothy 4.1, same difference. And we're told in the Old Testament to not be involved with familiar spirits, and it actually talks about wizards. And what's so interesting is that Dr. Oz's wife, Lisa, Lisa Oz, has a book filled with New Age teachings, and she jokingly refers to her husband as the wizard. I mean, there's almost a mockery going on here on some level. Now, I am not, I, I, I believe that Dr. Oz and Oprah and many of the people that are teaching the New Age out there are just as sincere as I was when I was involved in it. We really thought we had a new way of looking at life, uh, a way of bringing peace to the world. I don't doubt their sincerity. What I am concerned about are Christian pastors who bring New Agers into the church and, and let people like Dr. Oz get credibility. Um, there are many, many scriptures that warn about the stumbling block that this can cause for people, that you do not want to cause stumbling blocks to Christians. And you can get somebody that's going to think that Dr. Oz is okay because Rick Warren's okayed him. Let me give one other example since we're talking about this Daniel plan. One of the other doctors, Dr. Daniel Amen, has a book that's right at the top of the New York Times bestseller list now called The Amen Solution. And one of the reasons it's popular is because Rick Warren's helped to give him credibility by bringing him into the church. Dr. Amen describes himself as a Christian, yet in one of his uh, earlier books, he talks about doing a meditation. And he says the meditation is simply this. You repeat the following little phrases, sa ta na ma over and over and over again and you do corresponding finger movements as you say sa ta na ma well that's a hindu kundalini meditation i did um hinduistic meditations with rajneesh and you know if you had a blackboard and you write down sa s a ta t a na n a ma m a and you draw a line after the n you have the word Satan, and the remaining part is the AMA. This is almost mockery. It's, it's either pure coincidence, some kind of a cosmic joke, or, or just absolute um, mockery, spiritual is, mockery, because you've got yeah. Satan, and you've got Christians who would read Dr. Amon's book, and they would actually be meditating and saying Satanama, which contains the word Satan. This this is not a laughing matter. This is Hinduism, which is violently opposed to Christianity. And uh, people just don't realize that there is an amazing spiritual battle going on. My wife and I had no idea. We were just tripping through the New Age like it was like this wonderful experience. It was just like God is bringing everything together. But yet, what we found out later, when we read Matthew 24, 3 to 5, when Jesus was asked by his disciples, when will you be returning and what will be the end of the age, what the end of the world? He said, take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. When I read that, I, I was totally humbled because I was reading Jesus' warning about me. Because what I was taught in my New Age teachings was that I was a part of God, I was a part of Christ. In other words, I am Christ. That is exactly what Jesus warned us to beware of. And this is exactly what I learned in A Course in Miracles, which has been taught by Oprah Winfrey ever since 1992. She's been pushing A Course in Miracles. And if it's okay, I think probably we should maybe go into the Course of Miracles, what it is, because it's being brought forward as sort of a new spirituality. And by the way, Mike, you've been talking about overlapping language. You don't hear the term New Age that much because many, many uh, Christian uh, leaders in the 1980s warned about the New Age. I mean, we had a number of books out uh, that warned about the New Age. 
the new age isn't stupid. They just kind of retreated from that phrase, and they started using a new phrase, the new spirituality. What's really interesting is that many emergent church leaders are using that term, the new spirituality, to bring forth what they are now teaching. And this would include, include emergent leaders like, uh, like Rob Bell, um, like Erwin McManus, um, like Dan Kimball, and particularly a man by the name of Leonard Sweet, who I wrote about at length in a book that I wrote called The Wonderful, A Wonderful Deception. Warren, what I so, want to do, I, I'm sorry, my friend. Yeah. We're going to take a quick break, uh, break. I want to give the phone numbers, 800-979-9010. You can email us at comments at standupforthetruth.com. And when we come back with Warren Smith, we are going to talk about this false teaching called A Course in Miracles. If you want more info on the topics of today's show, then visit StandUpForTheTruth.com. Now, back to Mike LeMay. Mike and I, Mike and I are talking with our very special guest, uh, Warren Smith, and uh, we've got a phone call from Chris in Green Bay. Chris, welcome to Stand Up For The Truth. Hi. Um, the question I have is, um, this gentleman who is speaking is talking about um, Rick Warren inviting... Uh, Dr. Oz to church. Um, I know I understand that we're supposed to look at, you know, uh, things of the unseen world. However, isn't it our Christian duty to invite those who do not know the Lord? Um, because obviously he at one time was in a cult. So don't we want to invite people that are lost to church so that um, we hope they can get saved? Chris, great question. Warren, your thoughts on that? Well, of course we want to reach out to the lost, but we don't want to bring people who are teachers of the occult into the church to possibly mislead uh, just millions of Christians into believing that what Dr. Oz is involved in is good. Uh, I think if this caller knew a little bit more about the occult and the deceptive spirit world, she would be very concerned about, I mean, this is not like you invited Dr. Oz to come and sit in the back row at Saddleback Church, which is can be a little bit confusing in and by itself. I, I would probably take him to another church besides Rick Warren if you really want to get him, you know, Bible-based. But to bring somebody in, like Dr. Amen, uh, Dr. Oz, to teach the church to be healthy when they're involved in some of the most unhealthy spiritual practices is very, very wrong and completely unscriptural. So it's a nice sentiment. Uh, yes, we want to pray for Dr. Oz. We want to pray for Oprah. Uh, we want to do that, and if they were willing to come into a church and listen to a sermon, that's one thing. But to put him up in front of the church to be teaching about physical health, he's a cardiovascular surgeon. He's an expert on the heart. But the prophet Jeremiah said the heart is deceitful above all things. And unfortunately, Dr. Oz is just as deceived as my wife and I were when we were in the New Age. So, um, no, you do not want to invite people in. To, you don't invite a New Ager to come in and step up to the podium and teach the church. Church, yeah. even if it's supposedly just in physical health. But uh, anyway, that's part of the overlapping transitional stuff that goes on. And one of the reasons that I was very concerned about Rick Warren in the first place in his book, The Purpose Driven Life, uh, he introduced the idea of hope and purpose by referencing Dr. Bernie Siegel in his book, The Purpose Driven Life. And I was reading that, and I went, what in the world is Rick Warren doing? Dr. Bernie Siegel is a New Age physician along the lines of Dr. Oz. Bernie Siegel has a spirit guide named George. And I thought, why is Rick Warren introducing hope and purpose through a, a New Age doctor with a spirit guide? It just didn't make any sense. But then later on in the book, I saw that Rick Warren used a new version of the Bible called the New Century Version. And he, uh, this Bible actually interpreted Ephesians 4, 6 by saying God rules everything, is everywhere, and is in everything. And I went, ooh, why did he do that? Because he's laying out the very, very confusing teaching that we had in the New Age. Uh, you know, so anyway, with all, I'll do a big circle and come back to <laughs> A Course in Miracles, which is what I got involved in. And it has something to do with Dr. Oz, because Dr. Oz said that he matriculated, this is his term, he matriculated at Oprah University and that Oprah was his teacher. So we're really bringing one of Oprah's disciples into the church. And what does Oprah do that's so so off spiritually? Well, I'll tell you what. She, she recommended in 1992, she had Marianne Williamson on her program. 
Marianne Williamson had a book called A Return to Love, Reflections on the Principles of A Course in Miracles. Oprah introduced Marianne Williamson by saying, Marianne's book is one of the best books I've ever read. In fact, I bought a thousand copies, and I'm handing one out to everyone in the audience. She said, if it sounds like I'm trying to hype Marianne's book about A Course in Miracles, I am. The Course in Miracles is what I studied when I was in the New Age. It's reportedly, reputedly, new revelation from Jesus channeled through a, a woman at Columbia Presbyterian Hospital in New York City. This woman heard an inner voice saying, this is A Course in Miracles, please take notes. The teachings she wrote down for seven years were The Course in Miracles. Incidentally, the Columbia Presbyterian Hospital, where this woman took down The Course in Miracles, happens to be the same Columbia Presbyterian Hospital where Dr. Oz is a resident uh, cardiovascular surgeon. Just an interesting coincidence. Anyway, the Course in Miracles Jesus has the following teachings that we believed. This Jesus, by the way, if you look at 2 Corinthians 11, 3, 4, uh, the Apostle Paul chided the Corinthians and said, if someone comes through here preaching another Jesus and another gospel and another spirit, you might just go along with it. Well, this Jesus of A Course in Miracles said the recognition of God is the recognition of yourself. Well, that just isn't true, but I didn't know that when I read that. I thought it was New Revelation. I thought this was Jesus. This Jesus of A Course in Miracles says a slain Christ has no meaning. Ephesians 2 in the Bible says that enmity was slain on the cross. That's the heart of the matter. Uh, the Course in Miracles, Jesus said, the journey to the cross should be the last useless journey. Do not make the pathetic error of clinging to the old rugged cross. There's no sin. There's no devil. There's no persecution. Does this sound like the Bible upside down? I think so. And this is what Oprah was saying that, that was one of the best books that she'd read, Marianne Williamson's book, and that the principles of A Course in Miracles could change the world. Unfortunately, we have not had too many warnings coming from Christian leadership about the Course in Miracles. By the way, Oprah had the Course in Miracles taught daily on her Oprah and Friends radio program uh, several years ago uh, by Marianne Williamson. Uh, this has gone on for years. She's been pushing New Age teachings. And without many warnings coming from the church, particularly in the last five or ten years, this stuff has really started to, to soak in. So my wife and I got involved in a Course in Miracles study group. We were starting to, to share this new gospel from Jesus, supposedly, with our community in Chico. Um, I, I guess Aaron Rodgers hadn't been born yet, so he was spared my uh, evangelism at that time. Uh, and I just was about as high as I could be on my spiritual teachings. However, all of a sudden, at the height of our starting to teach these principles in our community, we were my wife and I started doing workshops that were open to the community, advertised in the Chico Enterprise record. All of a sudden, as a result of somebody that had come into my wife's massage practice, she became a massage practitioner too, certified, um, a very strange kind of oppressive presence suddenly started to visit us and it completely flew in the face of everything that we had been learning about the new age in the new age you do not there's no such thing as evil there's no such thing as satan you don't even think in those terms if there's something oppressive in your life you learn to look at it as a metaphysical mirror in other words whatever is out there is really something inside you that's a fear that you need to fix well the long and the short of it is is that we did everything that our course in miracles teachings our new age teachings told us to do there was a course in miracles affirmation that said in my defenselessness my safety lies well we repeated that that didn't do much good it's kind of like the opposite of putting on the full armor of God, standing fast against the wiles of the devil. So nothing seemed to work. And uh, we went to our, our New Age leaders. Uh, they sent love and light to whatever this was. Nothing worked. In uh, 1983, Christmas time, we went down to Southern California to my wife's mother's place. We felt like we put some space between this presence that was somehow associated with a client that had come into Joy's massage practice, but it didn't work. The presence continued to hound, particularly my wife. One day while she was visiting, while Joy was visiting a friend, I went to a bookstore in Hermosa Beach called the Either Or Bookstore. 
And I, I went to the New Age section because that's where I went for answers. I didn't go to the Christian section. And I saw a book there called The Beautiful Side of Evil by Johanna Michelson. I'd never heard of the woman before, but the title of the book kind of grabbed me because that's what it seemed like we were dealing with. Pulled the book down, started reading this woman's account, paralleled ours. She got very involved with occult New Age practices, and then she had to deal with an oppressive presence. So I'm on the floor taking down notes, and I'm encountering scripture for the first time that talks about deception talks about deceptive spirits. Uh, I'm writing down my notes, and a, a, a homeless mentally ill guy that I'd seen on the street several days before came into the store, back to where I was on the floor, and he started yelling at me, are you going to buy that book? What are you doing with that book? Are you going to buy that book or what? And I just sat there, and I went, does evil know that I'm reading about it? Can evil orchestrate and bring somebody off the street to come and harass me? And the answer inside myself was yes. And that was the beginning of my understanding that there was evil, that it could be orchestrated. And Johanna Michelson had the most remarkable way of dealing with evil. I wrote it down. Now, you, you might ask, why didn't you buy the book? Well, when you're in the New Age, you're pretty proud. You don't buy Christian book, books. I, w I was humbled to even be getting answered for, answers from a Christian book. That's how proud you are. But I wrote down what she said and how she dealt with the evil presence. The next day, when this presence again manifested itself, but particularly with Joy, I said, Joy, let's go out in your mom's backyard. I want to do something just a little bit different. Don't be afraid. And out in the backyard, addressing the presence, I, I, I recited exactly what Johanna had said. I said, Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command you to be gone. I forbid your presence here. I claim the protection of the blood of Jesus upon us. Go where Jesus sends you. And it was like whoosh. It was gone. And Joy said, it's gone. What, what was that? I said, I'm not completely sure, but it has something to do with Satan being defeated on the cross of Calvary. And I said, we need to start reading the Bible. And that was the beginning. It took us a while still, but that was the beginning of our understanding that the Bible was not only reliable, it was like, it was like just a microscope, just revealing, like a Geiger counter, revealing all the stuff that we've been involved in and all those scriptures about deception and about seducing spirits. Um, they all clicked into place, and we just immediately became very aware of how deceived we had been and how we needed to repent and, and eventually, obviously, surrender our life to the Lord Jesus Christ. There was a victory on the cross at Calvary. He defeated Satan. He defeated evil. And this is something that's being undone by the world if it were possible to undo it and unfortunately it's being minimized in the church there is a spiritual battle Ephesians 6 that details it precisely and that's where we're at we're in the throes of a very intense battle as this spiritual deception moves into the Christian church Warren we appreciate you taking the time today we look forward to talking to you again tomorrow as we uh, continue this discussion on new age spirituality creeping into the body of Christ Thank you so much for joining us, and we look forward to continuing this tomorrow morning, brother. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. God bless. Thanks. It's really good to be with you. Warren, I want to read one more email we got, and because I think it really uh, might embody what a lot of people were thinking about yesterday's show, and this lady uh, wants to keep uh, her, her name off this, but uh, she said she enjoyed the show, and she talked about a couple people, Brian McClure and Jeanine Kerrigan, who are new in the movement. Do we know anything about them? But she goes on to say, in regard to today's show, some of the information was a little repetitious with the 1990s thing and Oprah and so on. She said, I believe universalism is really the new thing headed into our churches. We need to feel good about one another. Don't be judgmental, all this good stuff. Warren, it leads me to my question. For those who are maybe hearing this new age movement for the first time, let's take a step back. What is the big picture, in your opinion, that is going on on the attacks on the Word of God right now? Well, just first addressing um, the thing about Oprah and it being kind of a 1990s thing. Oprah Winfrey is perhaps the chief false teacher out there in the world today. That's not to say that she's not a nice person, that she isn't sincere. Um, we were very sincere when we were involved in the New Age, but we were sincerely wrong. And uh, it, it would be a big mistake to put her in the 90s. Uh, she has consistently and progressively and exponentially increased her uh, presentation of New Age principles, which is universalism. I mean, we're, not, we're talking about the same thing. To say that isn't it universalism that's coming into the church, universalism has always been there. But Oprah Winfrey really started to focus this in. It all started on a program she did in 1987 with Marilyn Ferguson. Marilyn Ferguson 
uh, authored a book called The Aquarian Conspiracy. And basically this book in 1980 said, we are the New Age movement, here we come, ready or not. We have a great heretical idea, God is in everyone. And it went on to say, the author went on to say, that this idea is not going to take hold immediately, but it's going to need to be broadly communicated, and it will settle in. That's exactly what happened. Just seven years later, in 1987, this author was on Oprah Winfrey on a program called the New Age Movement. And on that program, Oprah Winfrey said that she had read a book by Eric Butterworth called Discover the Power Within You, with a back page or back cover endorsement uh, by Norman Vincent Peale, no less. And in that book, the subject of the divinity of man, God in man, was mentioned over 100 times. And Oprah said that that book changed her whole idea of Christianity and Jesus. She said she realized from reading that book by that New Age author, by the way, she said that it, it proved to her that Jesus didn't come to teach about his divinity, but about ours. And so Oprah, in 1987, started off with that. And then in 1992, she had Marianne Williamson on her program. Marianne Williamson, as we talked about yesterday, introduced the teachings called A Course in Miracles, reputedly new revelation from Jesus. I was very involved in that. My wife was very involved in it. Millions of people around the world are involved in it today. And these are teachings that are exactly the opposite of the Bible, but all in the name of God, the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, love, gratitude. It's unbelievable how deceptive and how tricky it is. Oprah Winfrey is not 1990s because she introduced all that in 1987 and 1992. She's had New Age authors on her program consistently through the years. She had Betty Eady on her program. Betty Eady had a book called Embraced by the Light. That book made its way into the Christian church with the same theme of God being in everyone. Oprah Winfrey, just last week, had Shirley MacLaine on her program. Shirley MacLaine was really the first one to really stick her neck out and say, I'm a New Ager, you know, I'm into channeling, uh, I'm into past lives. And she ran down the beach in her made-for-TV movie, Out on a Limb, back in the, uh, I think, mid to late 1980s. And she was running down the beach saying, I am God. And she was the butt of all sorts of jokes on David Letterman and late night shows. But she's the one that introduced it. And just like anything else, everybody laughed at first. And now the occult, the new age, the new spirituality has been normalized by so many people like Oprah, like Dr. Oz, who Oprah created on her, on her program, that now we're just taking it for granted that People can get on there and do psychic readings on television. Uh, we can have people like Deepak Chopra, uh, who was a consultant to the Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, who is a foremost New Age leader. He's now on programs being consulted as a spiritual expert. The occult, the New Age, has been normalized, and one of the reasons that that's happened is that high-profile Christian leaders have ignored it. They have just left it alone, much much like Germany. When things started to move, people just didn't do anything. Christian leaders are not addressing the blasphemy that's going on about who Jesus Christ is. So uh, with all respect to your uh, person who emailed in there, uh, that's just not accurate to say that that's so yesterday. Uh, Oprah Winfrey is very much today, right after 2000, September 11, 2001, Oprah Winfrey was the one who emceed the big uh, Yankee Stadium get-together that was sort of pulling everybody together after the uh, Twin Towers were down. And Oprah Winfrey is now moving into having her own network. She has uh, many people like Dr. Oz and Marianne Williamson scheduled to be on her program. The, the, the New Age philosophy, which is now being called the new spirituality, the new gospel, the new worldview, is going out as never before, and people need to recognize it, and Christian leaders and Christians themselves need to start standing up for the Lord, especially as we move into you know, this Easter week. Um, we have to really, I mean, Oprah's teachings, which she has stood behind, uh, especially this Course in Miracles, the Jesus of A Course in Miracles, as we said yesterday, that this Jesus says that a slain Christ has no meaning. The journey to the cross should be the last useless journey. He says, do not make the pathetic error of clinging to the old rugged cross. This is not, these are not kind of like sideline, wacky, uh, silly, 
baloney, these are all words that Rick Warren and others have used to describe the New Age. These are blasphemy. This is straight from the heart of the Antichrist philosophy that's being presented to the world. And Christians need to start standing up for these things. Uh, we can't just praise the Lord and, and move on like nothing's happening. We can't just say who Jesus Christ is anymore. We have to say who he isn't, and that's part of our witness. Great, great point, Warren. And I think the email, again, when she talked about isn't universalism the new attack, but really universalism is all throughout this entire New Age movement. So it's not like we have four or five different fronts uh, on the battle of God's word. They're all really interconnected, aren't they? They are. And, you know, uh the serpent obviously introduced all this when he doubted God's word and changed things. And, you know, um, we know who the serpent is, Satan, the devil. And just like a snake sheds its skin, the New Age shed, tried to shed its label of being New Age, calling itself the new gospel, the new spirituality. Now they're using the term new world view. And it really hasn't been adequately addressed. But what it really comes down to is there is a very single philosophy that's being presented to the world and uh, the prophet daniel uh warned about it back in in daniel 8 he said that antichrist would destroy <clears throat> wonderfully he said he would destroy wonderfully it's a very interesting concept it would look good it would look wonderful um he also said in that same area of scripture he said about antichrist he said by peace he shall destroy many we have a peace plan that's been introduced um, by Rick Warren that parallels in many ways the peace plan that's been introduced by the New Age. And, you know, Rick Warren's plan looks good on paper, but now we're watching as things shift and change, and he uses uh, peace plan as an acronym. He stand, originally stood for plant churches, then it changed to plant faith communities. I'm not sure what it is today. But the C was care for the sick, and it was mainly caring for the sick overseas. But now he's saying that C is caring for the sick within the church, and he's brought in three New Age doctors with the Daniel plan. We talked about that a little bit yesterday. So the idea is that world peace is something that is being brought forward especially with earthquakes, the Mideast, the economy, um, everything that's going on, everybody's being put up against the wall. And this idea of a peace plan, not just in the Mideast, but a world peace plan where we can all agree to get along is being brought forward. But at the bottom of this is a new world view. And that new world view says that all of humanity is the body of God. There's so many examples of that, too. I, I want to uh, just talk to you a second because uh, we've got some listeners who are wanting to call in. If you want to call in to ask Warren Smith a question about New Age spirituality, 1-800-979-9010. And we have Oliver on the phone from Wausau. Yes, good morning. Warren, I want to applaud you because yesterday, and, and Mike will know what I'm referring about this, Mike, I had to clean out the bunker, and I found books from the 19. 19- 70s as I was doing some cleaning and they were talking about the new age I want to applaud you Warren for not backing off because my question is this if we knew if our pastors knew if our Bible colleges and seminaries were pre- teaching excuse me, the true unadulterated word of God if we knew the genuine would the counterfeit be able to come in as it has and are these church leaders ignoring this because of their concerns about loss of membership revenues, and I'll hang up and listen to your response. You know, I can't, I can't speak for why many pastors are not addressing these issues, but uh, Scripture speaks to it. Um, Acts twenty twenty seven, uh, the Apostle Paul said, For I have not shunned to declare all the counsel of God. And what I've noticed is that a lot of Scripture that warns about the very things that are going on today, about deception, uh, about the way that things are being uh, conveyed to the world in terms of who Jesus is, uh, they, they're just not addressing these things. It's almost as if the things that Oprah and others are doing on major TV that's going around the world, Oprah is held up as a model in Arabian countries, as a model of, of a modern woman. And uh, meanwhile, she's having all of these New Age people on her program and, again, normalizing things that aren't right. So 
the answer is sure. You know, if uh, if everybody really knew their Bible and really believed this, if, when you go through the Bible, especially as you go through the New Testament, there's warning after warning after warning. The main warning that Jesus said it, 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 when he was asked by his disciples in Matthew 24, you know, what will be the sign of your return and, and the end of the world? And he said, take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And that was the point I was just making, which is the world is being taught that all of humanity is God and that each person is a cell in the body of humanity. So each person is a part of God and that we awaken to our own Christ consciousness when we realize that we are God. And that is the deception and that is what's creeping in. And that's what's so dangerous when men like Rick Warren use new Bible versions like he did in The Purpose Driven Life. In Ephesians 4, 6, when the Apostle Paul was addressing the faithful in Christ Jesus and the church in Ephesus, and he said that, you know, the Holy Spirit had been sent and that in that sense that God was in them all, in you all, talking to Christians. Uh, in the version that Rick Warren used, it said that God rules everything, is everywhere, and is in everything. Mm. That's the linchpin. That's what's coming in with no real repudiation of the false teaching about everybody thinking that they're God. So what we really have, the best way to give an example is that, it, like at Christmas time, when you have the uh, White House Christmas tree and the president's there ready to throw the switch. When I was a kid, if one of those little bulbs on the Christmas tree didn't work, it, it shut down the whole tree. The whole tree just didn't light up. And what the New Age is saying, and what people like Oprah and the New Age leaders that she's having on her programs, the, the m just myriad books that have become bestsellers, Conversations with God by Neil Donald Walsh, um, Marianne Williamson's book about the Course in Miracles, James Redfield's book, Celestine Prophecy. What they're basically, those people have gathered together, they have a group called the Global Renaissance Alliance of New Age Leaders, and they're saying that if people do not recognize their own humanity, they are going to short-circuit the energy flow of humanity, and they are going to hinder the ability of the world to have peace. Let me just state that another way. In other words, what they're saying, and I, I go into this at great length in, in my most recent book, False Christ Coming, Does Anybody Care What New Age Leaders Really Have in Store for America, the Church, and the World? What they're really saying is that we can no longer put up with people who deny their own divinity. In other words, if a person denies their own divinity, and that would be Christians for one, it would also probably be Orthodox Jews and Orthodox even Muslims who would not say that they are God, but particularly Christians, obviously. If those Christians do not say that they're God, then they are like that Christmas tree bulb that short circuits the energy flow of humanity and prevents the world from having world peace. Back to the prophet Daniel. Antichrist will destroy by peace. By peace he shall destroy many. He will do it wonderfully. It will be a peace plan that will look really, really good. Some people might remember, uh, some of the older folks might remember Cat Stevens, who's now a Muslim. Oh, I remember he had a song. Yeah. He, he had a very catchy song. Remember that Peace Train song? Yeah. Oh, yes. Everyone get on the Peace Train, holy roller, get on board. <laughs> when the world will be as one, he said in that, in that song, just as John Lennon said it, in Imagine. But yet Bob Dylan came in with his gospel song in the early 80s, and he said, sometimes Satan comes as a man of peace. The Antichrist is not going to come in, you know, with a pitchfork and with fangs. He's going to come in with a program that looks really good. It's going to be the very program that's been laid out on Oprah Winfrey. The occult has been normalized. We're heading towards a humanity that is up against the wall and that wants some kind of peace. And those people who interfere with peace are going to be a problem for humanity. What we're doing is we're laying out exactly what Jesus said would happen one day when he said, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. Well, wait a second. The Jesus that's being presented to the world is a really sweet, popular guy. He's just, uh, you know, they're pulling out all the scriptures that they want to make that case, and he is. But he also warned. They called me Beelzebub. They called me the devil. They're going to call you the devil, too. New Age leaders, I've got quotes in my book, False Christ Coming. They are actually saying to not believe in your own divinity is satanic. Mm. They are I, I, actually... 
Yeah. I, I'm sorry. Well, I just want to say, folks, I, I, I have in my hands False Christ Coming. Does anybody care? I really encourage you to pick up this book. Uh, of the 200 and some books I've read over the last year, I think this book has really pointed me more to the Word of God and what's really going on, sadly, in the world than any. So False Christ Coming, does anybody care? It is available at Mountain Stream Press, uh, uh, Warren's website, or you can get it through Amazon. And And Terry just wrote it and said, let's not forget that Oprah gives away really cool gifts. Uh, You know, and and she points out the the gift bags, but she also just gave away a bunch of cars, which is amazing to me. Um, But I want to go back to something that you've said in in many of your books, and and I'm reading them too. They're fabulous. Um, You talk about how, you know, we're just waking up as a church and recognizing these leaders uh, are suddenly, we, we think that they're suddenly kind of veering off in a different direction, but they've always actually um, believed in their beliefs. They're, we're just now waking up to it. And, and I want to read something. I, I've got another book in my hand. Um, this one isn't Rob Bell's latest book that he's getting into trouble for, but uh, his first book, Velvet Elvis, which a lot of people have on their bookshelves. And I, if you don't mind, Warren, I'd, I'd just like to read a, just a couple sentences. He writes, uh, in Jesus, God is putting it all back together to make the cross of Jesus just about human salvation is to miss that God is interested in saving everything, every star, every rock, and every bird, all things. True spirituality, then, is not about escaping this world to some other place where we will be forever. A Christian is not someone who expects to spend forever in heaven there. A Christian is someone who anticipates spending forever here in a new heaven that comes to earth. So the goal isn't about escaping this world, but about making this world the kind of place God can come to. What do you think about that? Well, I think uh, Rob Bell is like a lot of the emergent leaders. Um, Some of the things that he says sounds really good, but this is a man who does not stand up against the blasphemy that's going on against the Lord right now. You don't hear any warnings from any of these new or the the New Age sympathizers in many ways. It was what I was going to say, but these emergent leaders are not addressing the blasphemy that's going on when when Jesus is being, uh, went like, for instance, the quotes that I gave before, a slain Christ has no meaning. The journey to the cross should be the last useless journey. New Age leader after New Age leader is parading across TV, turning the minds of just millions of people to a false Christ, to a false Jesus, to a, to a false gospel. These men are not addressing that issue at all. And I think that's one of the telltale signs. As a matter of fact, I have a friend who's a pastor in Long Beach, and he was involved with the Emergent Church. He was very involved with Erwin McManus. Uh, he went to Bill Hybels Church in Willow Creek, and he was working. Then he realized that this just is not right. It's not true. And we were talking one day, and I said to him, I said, you know, I said, one of the things that really stands out is that these men are not addressing the heresy that's going on and the New Age blasphemy that's going on and the way that Jesus is being completely redefined. And he said, you know what? You're right. That's exactly right. They're picking out certain things, and it sounds good. They'll call Jesus their Savior, but they're not standing up for him. And that's really what's going on here. Now, Rob Bell has actually talked about quantum physics. And I recognize a lot of when he's saying that the thing about the stars and bringing everything together, that really ties in with everything is God. All of the universe is God. For instance, in the shack, the book The Shack, anybody that reads that book carefully will see that the New Age and that new spirituality has weaved its way into that book. One way of recognizing it is that the Jesus of the shack said that God dwells in around and through all things okay there it is again god in everything the, one of the other telltale signs is that the word creation is spelled with a capital c at least 20 times in a shack now those of us that were in the new age know know what that means capital c means that god is in his creation there's a book that came out uh called occult america the secret history of how mysticism shaped our uh, nation by mitch horowitz a new age writer Ken Burns, who's done a lot of documentaries on on the public broadcasting system, the Civil War, baseball, um, jazz, well, he actually has a front-page endorsement. He says, what a fascinating book. It happens that there's another equally compelling take on our complicated national narrative that lies just beneath the surface of things. We may see a, a, a documentary in the future by Ken Burns talking about how mysticism really shaped our nation, which would bring... Uh, masonry into the picture and how a lot of the uh, people that uh, formed or founded this country uh, were actually masons 
and masonry is part of the new world religion so to bring this all back around to the to the idea of god being in everything quantum physics i really believe is being brought forward it's being brought forward not only by rob bell but by another um so-called Christian leader, Leonard Sweet. He has a book called Quantum Spirituality, where he praises New Age leaders as his role models and his heroes. And basically, what they're doing is they're saying that quantum physics is going to prove, science is going to prove that God's in everything. Some people have heard about the God particle. This may sound very confusing to people, but 1 Timothy 6, 2021 warns about science being falsely so-called and some will err concerning their faith i believe that the linchpin that's going to bring this whole thing into play i'm watching it on both sides is they're going to try to use quantum physics to prove that god's in everything and that will be like leonard sweet has a book out called nudge and i think the word nudge appears in the aquarian conspiracy at least a couple of times it's this idea that we just have to just move off of our beliefs just a little tiny bit we have to just go from our ego they say to the god within in other words using their language we have to awaken another overlapping term we have to awaken to the god within because God is an energy that permeates and interpenetrates our, our universe and our creation. In other words, may the force be with you. Oh, uh, well, well said. And the Star well. Wars. I mean, all these things play together. And um, I've written a lot about this in a wonderful deception, uh, the further New Age implications of the purpose-driven movement, where I document a lot of this stuff. But this may sound a little bit complicated to everybody, but I just want to bring it down to this. 2 Corinthians 11, the Apostle Paul talked about the simplicity that's in Christ. That was, that was the phrase he used, the simplicity in Christ. I want to emphasize there's a simplicity in the deception. It's a twisting and a turning, and it's a nudge that takes you from the idea that Jesus Christ died on the cross, and that by repenting of our sins and our basic sinful nature and accepting the Lord as our Savior, the Holy Spirit is sent to us and dwells in us. But what they're doing is they're saying, no, the Holy Spirit naturally dwells within each person. Each person is already God. People just don't know, and here's the phrase, who they really are. Who mm -hmm. they really are. Yeah. We now have awakening conferences in the church. We have shift conferences in the church. All you have to do, the New Age says, is shift from your ego to the Christ within. We all connect. Another big word, connect. And by connecting, we unleash the power. And that's another phrase you see a lot of, unleashing the power of humanity, harnessing the power. This all comes back to the Jesuit priest, Pierre Teilhard de Chardin. The Aquarian Conspiracy, the book The Aquarian Conspiracy, is taken from Chardin saying that this soul must be a conspiracy of individuals. Chardin says that God is in every atom. New Age leader Leonard Sweet says that Pierre Teilhard de Chardin was 20th century Christianity's major voice. That is so wrong. Chardin is a father of the New Age movement, and what's happening is that New Age influenced people like Leonard Sweet are bringing Chardin into the church. Rick Warren did small group workshops with Leonard Sweet. Leonard Sweet has literally been at the leadership level of almost every denomination, preaching and teaching. He's being hailed as sort of the new Renaissance man, the postmodern preacher. And what he is, is he's a transitional agent bringing in a new worldview that is going to lead to the false peace that was warned about by Daniel, and Jesus warned about the deception that would come at the end. Not a new world view where the world is going to be saved. It's going to be a world that's deceived, and the leaders are deceived and deceiving. Evil will wax worse and worse. And was Jesus being negative? Was he being divisive by saying all this? He said no. He said, behold, I warn and, and tell you of these things ahead of time so you won't be offended when they happen. They're but, happening, and, and, and we need to be aware that they're happening, and we need to stand up for our, our faith. Amen. And just so you know, folks, Leonard Sweet recently, within the last few months, spoke at a church in the Valley, so this stuff is hitting home. When we come back, more with Warren Smith. This is Stand Up For The Truth. 
Call in your questions now at 494-9010 in Green Bay or 1-800-979-9010 nationwide. Now back to Mike LeMay. Our guest this morning, Warren Smith. We are talking about the New Age movement and how it is permeating Christianity. Just a, a couple quick notes. I want to remind you to join us uh, Saturday, April 23rd at the Meadows Conference Center on 43 in East Mason for Coaching to Change Lives. Uh, go to integritygb.com slash coaching. Uh, type in guest and you can be there free. Compliments of uh, the the pastor and uh, stand up for the truth. Also, the 2011 Great Lakes Pastor Conference, April 20th through 30th at Calvary Chapel in Appleton. I will be there. Would love to meet you. You can go to ccappleton.org or call 735-1242. And if you would like to hear more from Warren Smith, our guest today, he is coming to Wisconsin. I've got uh, two events here that you can take part in. Uh, the first one is April 30th, Understanding the Times Prophecy Conference. Uh, that's in Cedarburg at the Cultural Center there. You can uh, check out online about that. Also, May 1st, Lake Country Bible Church, and that's in Har- Harlan, or Hartland, Wisconsin, and you can check him out there. Warren, uh, b- back to our, t- you know, we talk a little bit about Rick Warren. And uh, we talk a little bit about Oprah. And, you know, I mean, uh, Oprah seems like a very nice lady. Uh, Pastor Rick Warren has written multi, multi-million bestsellers, his purpose-driven life and purpose-driven church. It, it's, it hurts me. It hurts me to, to, to see where some of this is going. But we really do have to be alert in these days because the false teachings and, and a lot of very dangerous doctrine just seems to be creeping into uh, to what we're learning in church and what we're reading as Christians. Yeah, I, I think that um, the idea that somebody's nice or that somebody preaches a lot of the truth, uh, Galatians 5, 9 says a little leaven, leaven is the whole lump. And when you start mixing things together, uh, that's why the Bible warns in a number of places about being double-tongued, double-minded. Uh, David talked about in Psalm 12 about those with a double heart. Um, it doesn't really, you know, Jesus said they draw nigh to me with their mouth and they uh, honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Uh, the Psalms talk about the inward truth in the heart. Uh, you can be clean and white on the outside, as the Pharisees apparently were, but inside they were full of dead men's bones. So we have to look at everything that's being said. And one of the things that people really need to deal with right now is why is Dr. Oz, a man who's recommending necromancy, contacting the dead, a front-page endorsement of books by psychics, um, endorsing Reiki, which involves uh, body energy and spirit guides, uh, does transcendental meditation, does yoga, why is he being brought into the church to teach the church how to be healthy? It doesn't make any sense. Uh, Rick Warren says, oh, we're just doing physical health. Well, would you bring a psychic in who you know knows a lot about uh, vitamins to the church? Would you give him a, a, a platform? Would, would this person get notoriety for being brought into the church? No, this is part of the transition that's going uh, on in the church uh, as the church is being taken into a new worldview, a new spirituality. I would like to say one thing um, that I think is really important. We've talked a lot about that God is not in everything. I would like to just uh, give some uh, scriptural examples that people can, you know, use as verses to counteract this. Uh, would that be okay? Just go ahead and listen. Yeah, yeah we'd love that. Go, yeah, go. Psalm 920, uh, put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. Uh, one of my personal favorites is Psalm 39.5. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Let me just do that one again. Verily, every man at his best state, best state being God's self, higher self, Christ self, uh, true self, you know, at his best state is altogether vanity. I think in many Bible versions it says vapor, same general effect. Isaiah 31.3, now the Egyptians are men, not God. Isaiah 46.9, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. Jeremiah 10.23, O Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. Ezekiel 28.2, because thine heart is lifted up and thou hast said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God in the midst of the seas. Yet thou art a man and not God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Uh, just a few more. Hosea 11.9, for I am God and not man. This one, I think, is more powerful than just about any in the whole Bible because it comes right from Jesus. John 2.24-25. 
But Jesus did not commit himself unto them, because he knew all men, and needed not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. Now, if he knew that God was in man, would he say that? Or would, uh-huh. he, would he feel like that? Obviously not. Warren, the great. Corinthians... 2 Corinthians 4, 5, for we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. And the last one, uh, and there's many more, but these are just ones that people can hang on to. And by the way, uh, these are in the appendix of uh, A Wonderful Deception. A new printing is coming out in about three weeks, and and these are in the appendix, uh, along with uh, a a lengthy article on the Daniel plan. Galatians 6, 3, for if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Those are all refutations, and we're we're not just talking like this is just a few people. I mean, in a recent book by Glenn Beck, uh, I'm reading directly from his book, and the book uh, is called um, The Seven Wonders That Will Change Your Life. Glenn Beck says, if God is everything and everywhere and inside everyone, then I figured he had to be inside me, too. Uh, Then he says, I wasn't here by accident. I was a part of God's plan, and I had to respect that plan, or at least not resent it. I had to respect myself as a part of him. This is just straight Mormon, New Age, New Spirituality, New World View, and and this is why people need to be very careful, because someone like Glenn Beck can give you a lot of good information about many things, and then all of a sudden, boom, there it is. Mm -hmm. Oh, a- kind of like, absolutely, yeah. Warren. We always tell our guests, you know, Glenn Beck has a, a, a great thumb on the pulse of what's happening economically and politically in this nation. Do not look to him for spiritual guidance. Yeah, we, we've got uh, some practical questions coming in now on our email. And if you have a question for Warren Smith, just uh, write to us at comments at standupforthetruth.com. Jennifer writes, thank you, Warren, for your stand on truth. This is so refreshing. Could you comment on yoga? Is there such a thing as Christian yoga? Can you separate the spiritual part of yoga from the physical part, which is a very common thing we hear today, and is this dangerous? Yeah, I think we've already addressed some of that. Uh, This is part of the way that it's coming in. We're just, like Rick Warren said, we're just doing physical health here. And then he brings in three holistic doctors who all talk about the indivisibility of body, mind, and spirit. So it's just obviously not accurate. The best resource I know on yoga is Carol Matriciana. Uh, She... um, came out of the New Age movement. Uh, She lived in India. Uh, She has a a DVD set called Yoga Uncoiled, and she really goes into it. The most powerful testimony in the whole DVD is a, a Hindu man who says that Christians who think that they can do yoga and and call it Christian yoga are badly mistaken, that it's it's inherently tied in with Hinduism. Uh, It's the unio mystica. It's the mystical union. Unio Mystica is a term that uh, was the title of a book by my former guru, Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh. Unio Mystica, mystical union, and that's what you're doing. You're freeing up all those physical exercises were designed to free up the kundalini energy that's at the base of the spine. Interestingly, in the Truth Project that's been uh, done by many churches, section number eight uh, talks all about unio mystica with no warnings about the unio mystica of Hinduism and the New Age. It's another example of how terms are being introduced without any clarifying contrary descriptions. Warren, we have about six minutes left. Uh, we did a show last week that questioned the biblical illiteracy of, of Bible-believing Christians. Only 38% of evangelical Christians view the Word of God as the unadulterated 100% absolute truth. Uh, it is so important, is it not, that we get back into our Bible, stop depending on what man is saying is in the Bible, and go directly to the Word of God, because we seem to be becoming a uh, biblically illiterate church. Well, you know, the, the way that I came into the faith was a woman, uh, Johanna Michelson, wrote a book called The Beautiful Side of Evil, and she presented scripture that described exactly what was going on in our life. As a matter of fact, um, Psalm 119 is a, is a great uh, uh, psalm for people to read about the Word of God. But what what happened, I mean, if you can believe this, Psalm 119.71, when I talked about my uh, testimony yesterday, we were getting spiritually oppressed, and we actually were in warfare and didn't even know what warfare was. We just thought it was us being fearful. That's what the New Age would tell us. But Psalm 119.71, listen to this. This is how we came into the faith. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. And then uh, in on 
verse 50 in that same psalm, this is my comfort in my affliction, for thy word hath quickened me. I, I just was up in northern Alberta, and on Sunday uh, I gave a, uh, the Sunday school lesson to the church, and I, I called it the awesome wonder of God's word. And also in Psalm 119, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yes, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Uh, through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. God's word is awesome, it's wonderful, it's tried, it's right, it's good, it's true, it's inspired, it's the word of God, and it's the only thing we have to, to come against the false teachings that are in the world. And anybody out there that's a believer that doesn't really know the word of God, that's what you, that is our sword. That is what's going to help us to rightly divide the word of truth. It's inspired by God, and Everything that we were involved in was just put up like an x-ray in front of us. It was like, here's how you're being deceived. It was like 80 times better than any morning newspaper in terms of its accuracy. People, I hear people like uh, emergent leader Shane Claiborne says in one of his books, uh, The Irresistible Revolution, he says to the reader, now, maybe you haven't read the Word of God. Well, maybe that's good because those of us that have read it so many times, it gets stale. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, you know, I, it's never gotten stale to me. Mm. It, it's unbelievable how the Bible describes all the deception that's going on today, but yet we have so many leaders who are ignoring the deception. And the question was asked earlier, do you think they're doing that to keep everybody in their congregation? I don't know, but I'll tell you one thing. I would not want to stand before God uh, when they're letting all this stuff just fly by and they're just taking what they think is the high road. Um, we are to contend for the faith, it says, uh, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it continuing. He who endures to the end shall be saved. I mean, we better start recognizing that there's a spiritual battle that's fully described in the Bible. We're in the midst of it, and by ignoring it, uh, it doesn't go away. Warren, I want to thank you so much for taking time these last two days. I know we're going to be checking in with you uh, on a monthly basis. Uh, stay strong in the Lord. Keep fighting for him. And uh, just thank you for standing up to what I'm sure is a lot of criticism and a lot of heat. Uh, from outside the church and even within within the church that uh, doesn't want to have our eyes open to what's going on. Warren Smith, thank you so Thanks, much, Warren. brother, for joining us. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. God bless you, my friend.